Welcome back, guys. We are here on Planet Zoo. We are in our new zoo. Uh, this is Umqua Valley. And we are building our first habitat. Uh, I decided to start with the grizzly bears. Um, just because uh, my last zoo, I didn't have anything large. And I, I want to do uh, some different animals for this one. So... Um, with this being set in the Pacific Northwest, I thought the grizzly bear would be uh, a nice, a nice animal to start out with, uh, something a little bit different. Uh, so here, as you see, I'm working on the pathing so I can get the guests from our entrance plaza down to uh, the ground level so they can actually get to the habitat itself. Um, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about how to do this and uh, it uh, I took a lot of inspiration off of uh, uh, grizzly bear habitat um, can't remember where it was from I want to say Minnesota uh, but yeah as far as the um, the habitat itself goes it doesn't really um, look like that one but <laughs> the uh, a couple of different elements um, from that habitat are what gave me the inspiration um, that particular one uh, was looked pretty cool you like walk through this uh, lava tube and you have windows where you can get up close and personal with the bears and stuff but uh, I was gonna go for that whole uh, aesthetic of walking through like a cave or the lava tube like they have but um, didn't really didn't really fit what uh, what else I wanted here um, I wanted guests to be able to look from the top of the uh, entrance plaza at you know into the habitat itself and i just felt like trying to build like a walkthrough cave would just kind of take away from that that whole feel so um right here i, I put in a pool so they could swim in um i did realize it was a little large so um, i shrunk it down a little bit and then i think i made it a little too small um I did have to go back and kind of adjust things because uh, when I put like the fish feeder in there, the automatic feeder, um, it says it was unaccessible or inaccessible. So I kind of had to uh, move things back a little bit until it was finally uh, accessible. Uh, still haven't seen the bears go in there to swim, but. Uh, as usual, I don't really sit there and watch <laughs> the game play very often. Um, this particular one, I did have to let run for a while. Uh, I kept running out of money. Um, probably because of the entrance that I built. Um, took a lot. And I wasn't making enough from the, the exhibits that I had in there to cover everything so yeah I had to kind of fiddle with some management and I took out some loans kind of uh, to help build the habitat in order to get guests to come and donate more money and it was kind of a pain it it took a few days just to uh, just to have enough money to build so uh, anyone starting out don't overdo your entrance <laughs> like I did. Um, yeah, you gotta have income to uh, keep going. So, uh, anyway, um, I, I wanna keep this, I, I'm using only faux rocks within the uh, enclosures. Um, I wanted to keep it, you know, realistic as far as what a zoo would make. Um, so, 
I'm only going to use faux rocks. Um, I've gone through and recolored everything, made little sets for myself, uh, just so I could just easily uh, plop down all of the faux rocks in the colors that I want at once. Um, I still haven't gotten the hang of what they can walk on and what they can't. So uh, there's a lot of these that I did have to remove and just I just left uh, dirt sloping down or the terrain sloping down uh, so they could reach you know everything in the habitat itself. Uh, yeah, that's I, I still don't understand what's traversable and what's not. Um, I see all these other creators like covering the entire ground with with rock and the faux rocks and stuff and it looks amazing and I assume the animals uh, can walk all around it but every time I try it does not work so yeah uh, put in some of the enrichment items like I like to do first just so I don't uh, I don't cover everything in the uh, vegetation and then don't have any room for the enrichment to keep the animals happy. Uh, this particular habitat, I I put a lot of the trees uh, behind it on the outside of the barrier, um, just because I I wanted to have them that I wanted them to have more room inside to uh, maneuver and, and walk around. Uh, so I did just a lot of stuff on the outside to kind of give it that look but uh, don't take up their, their traversable space. And then here, uh, working on the, the, uh, the building, the, the backstage holding areas and stuff. Um, this building, um, I did take a lot of inspiration from the, from the uh, I, I wanna say it was a Minnesota zoo. I'm really sorry if I messed that up. <laughs> But uh, I found the Zulex uh, online that uh, they post like full enclosures, uh, like the plans and the backstage areas and lots of pictures and everything. So yeah, that's a great resource if you're needing, needing help on building stuff. Um, yeah, I, I looked through a lot of those. Um, that's how I kind of decided I wanted to start off with the grizzly bears is by uh, checking out a bunch of the the enclosures and everything from that but uh, yeah um, right here um, these are like three little um, I don't want to call them cages but they're cages <laughs> uh, holding areas for the bears so uh, you know, if they were sick or, or needed to be um, separated from the from anything else within the habitat, they could go in here and be contained safely. And uh, honestly, I don't know if they can actually go in here. I I keep everything all closed off. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, large enough for their actual hit boxes that go in there and and stuff but uh, yeah it's just there for for visual purposes and this I, I brought up a picture from the Zulex and try to uh, imitate it as best I could and I thought I came really close to uh, to making it look exactly like uh, the picture so, uh, yeah, I just kind of work on this one here and then I copy and paste them over to the other two. Um, nothing too special. I do try to um, kind of make some, um, on the door, like make it look like the, it actually like latches and, and locks and everything. So, uh, it's putting a little more little more work into this than what I usually used to do so I, I hope to continue 
that trend throughout the whole zoo uh, whether it be just uh, copying uh, this to other um, backstage areas or you know coming up with something uh, entirely different um, I'll try not to bore everybody with the same things over and over in future videos so uh, keep that in mind if you're a returning uh, viewer uh, yeah I, I hope this series um, <laughs> I hope I'm able to finish this one um, I don't know how many animals I plan on putting in here but uh, for those of you that uh, watch the uh, the Talbot National Zoo uh, kind of came to an abrupt end uh, before I even finished the primate forest uh, simply because I didn't uh, I didn't feel good about it anymore um, honestly the the tree house that I made for it um, I thought it was cool at first but then the more I was working with it and everything it was just kind of a uh, it just became something I didn't like so uh, it just kind of made me not want to finish it uh, so sorry about that um, I'm gonna try not to do that this time <laughs> uh, so you see I use those air conditioning units as kind of um, like a I'm guessing it's an electrical box for the lock system and you'll see here in just a few seconds I do a side-by-side -side view of what I made and the picture I use as a reference there you go you may have to pause it and take a look but uh, yeah I thought it came out pretty good and then uh, across the little uh, hallway here this is gonna be their like indoor enrichment area um, I did use the gutters for the track but then realized I used the wrong gutters so I went back and got the the square ones rather than the round ones um, just because I think they they look a little bit better there um, and this whole uh, this whole build I was having trouble um, since it's not on the grid as far as the uh, um, I don't I can't remember the name of it but like the the main grid for the whole zoo um, every time I went to move something like this door it was always um, skewed a little bit so that was kind of a pain because I was used to just sliding things back and forth and it just was not working you see <laughs> I was having trouble putting it back um, I do have a separate staff um, a walkway to the the habitat itself there um, so the animals will stay on one side and then the staff will be on the other side for safety reasons and then I figured these uh, windows needed a, a few more bars so the bears couldn't just jump up there and break the glass out and escape so um, yeah I made up these little bars to put over it and then uh, just a, a little climbing structure so uh, if they need to be inside but need some exercise and stuff just built a little climbing structure and threw, a, threw some water in there for them and then uh, the, the building uh, I changed it up a few times um, I decided I didn't like the exterior walls so I changed those and then the shape wasn't right so I had to change that um, and you see there I I used uh, from Adam up gaming um, he has a thing on the workshop for some backstage stuff and I really like the the, the cork board there on the wall so I uh, use that here and they just kind of threw some stuff down just kind of their a little work area and now the roof um, had a little bit of trouble I had to uh, 
kind of the pieces didn't really snap into place because I like the uh, roof tiles to be on top of the wall and kind of instead of kind of sunk into it. So um, I had to kind of fiddle things around a little bit, but it worked. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure how this was gonna look um, once uh, the roof was on and stuff because I wasn't sure how I was gonna do the roof exactly, but um, I think in the end it. It looked pretty good with that skylight and everything, so I was kind of surprised myself on that. <laughs> um, and I'm I'm gonna number every building with what's in it. Um, I didn't do that in my last one. I kind of started to, and then I stopped. And um, I'm just gonna kind of uh, be consistent more in this zoo. So uh, yeah, I think it just helps with the realism a little bit and then putting in the air duct system and that little sign there um, I made it just in a, a sandbox uh, mode just so I could play around and just try to um, just try to make it without worrying about um, the cost and the price and how much money I have and stuff so there were a few things that I did that um, just kind of built up some stuff and then made blueprints of it um, and then that way I could just uh, use it use a blueprint when I was ready kind of did all that in my my spare time before I was even finished with the entrance part of this zoo so uh, yeah this this section again um, direct reference to the the, the same habitat um, this is kind of what they use for the entrance to the the uh, Grizzly Coast, I believe it's called. So yeah, I uh, tried to just kind of emulate that the best I could. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, when I first started playing this game, I didn't really like the the faux rocks I always use the natural rocks but uh, the more I use them the more I like them just the, the different shades and textures and stuff uh, that the natural rocks don't have uh, just really really helps uh, you know change things up because you can kind of you know turn them and twist them and flip them upside down just to give you new looks on everything I just trying to decorate this up a little bit and again I'm gonna throw up a little reference picture to kind of give you an idea of what I was going off of um, it's not uh, exactly the same but I think I did a pretty good job of, of uh, copying it there we are so, yeah Now, finally, uh, back to working on the habitat itself. Uh, I know I wanted to put a kind of a, a stream, like a mountain stream, directly in the middle of the habitat. Uh, I wanted them, the bears, to have to walk like across the water to uh, get around and stuff. So I just used a lot of the effect pieces. Um, just make it look like it's running down uh, the rocks and everything and into their water pool so uh, I think it it worked out it did what I wanted it to do and then on this side I kind of brought in that element of the like the lava tube um, the cave system so I made my own little bear cave over here uh, the guests can walk inside and then I put um, stuff for the bears to sleep on and they go over there quite a bit so you see um, making a little sign to let people know um, that this is the bear cave and 
it is really hard for me to not say beer cave instead of bear cave and I don't know why <laughs> um, I actually had to uh, to pay attention to how I was spelling things because for whatever reason um, bear just looks weird to me like the word itself don't know why um, again just kept wanting to make it say beer don't know what that says so uh, yeah with this the, the way the rock is up here um, I decided to put two two little signs up there just so if you're just depending on which way you come walking up to that area um, I did make these little um, information boards um, so I have one on each side of the in the viewing uh, areas and then I found this neat little um, um, comparison chart of different sizes of bears compared to humans. So um, I was trying to get it kind of to scale. So if a guest walked up to it, it would be kind of um, to scale. <laughs> uh, but it was just a little bit off, but that's okay. Um, I tried to uh, kind of mess with different size boards and everything, and it was either way too big or the size that I had. So I went with that. It was close enough. And then here, just putting on the other little shelter um, for the, the second viewing area, or the first, depending on which way you come down in here. Uh, yeah, just uh, some simple boards going up the sides. Uh, to the roof uh, with a lot of um, glass on the front to see into the habitat and then I made these little railings on the back side just to keep people from hurting themselves or walking to where they're not supposed to go all right and then we're gonna finish up with just uh, finishing out the foliage here inside the habitat um, to make it look foresty uh, with some bracken and buffalo grass I have some flowers and and um, some of the the leaf the leaf litter uh, just to finish it out and uh, we are almost done with the speed build here and I will uh, I'll be back with a kind of a live walkthrough I'm gonna try a something a little new this time around so um yeah i will be back in just a little bit to walk around this little section of the zoo with you okay All right, we are back to the live portion of our video here. Uh, and I'm gonna start out at the entrance gate. Um, this is based on the San Antonio Zoo. Uh, I was looking around for different, uh, different things. And uh, this is the one that I, I decided to uh, go with because I like the uh, just everything about it the way it looked the way it was up on the hill um, so yeah that's what I did and we got our ticket boost over there of course so we're gonna walk through here and I still don't have anything up here in this giant entrance plaza um, still don't really know what I'm gonna do so if anyone has any suggestions let me know um, I'll walk over here really quick because there's nothing really to look at we got our stairs we go down the stairs then we get our first little look at this habitat um, I think over this way up over there I'm gonna put like the uh, the vet and everything I probably have that connect over here and kind of behind everything with a maybe a road or something I don't know um, but anyway back to this uh, so yeah we see our 
our little entrance to the grizzly bears and there's our sign that we saw in the the speed build and then over here is the first viewing area and I made this little sign up here um, become a zoo member sponsor your own habitat all you got to do is like subscribe and leave a comment and if you would like uh, to sponsor this habitat this could be the uh, your name inserted grizzly bear um, habitat. So yeah. I put up a little information signs that I grabbed off the web. Uh, hopefully I don't get in trouble for that. Then we got our first little um, viewing area here. Uh, more little information boards down there. Got one of our bears into the water, finally. I was just saying, I, I hadn't seen them uh, swim around or anything in there, but there we are. That's pretty cool. They're actually using everything. Um, and these uh, little donation uh, bin covers I made as well. Um, it's a little hideous, but <laughs> it, it kind of fits the... Uh, the whole uh, aesthetic of, of this habitat, so I stuck with it. And then we come down here. Um, I did a little off-camera uh, building for this uh, walkthrough here. Just put a little um, elevated. <laughs> People are gathering up there to see inside, so that's pretty cool. But it was just kind of like a little rest area up there. And then here's our our comparison sign. And I did go through and made um, just kind of changed up these uh, the you know the games information boards uh, just so you can actually read what they say. Um, I always hated that when I try to figure out uh, what animal is supposed to go in an enclosure because it's empty. And I look at the sign and it's in the the Latin name and I don't know what it means uh, so yeah just kind of put everything in the English version then we got our underwater viewing and see way down there and then we walk up over here to our bear cave um, and at night I do have a, a light underground but it still shines and lights all this up so uh, I do have to still go back. I do have some light poles and stuff in here, but um, I have a little a little tweaking to do yet, and um, I need to to make up some signs. There we go. That lights everything up. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but I want to put up some like directional signs and stuff like that, telling you where where you're going and everything. Then we come in here, a lot of people stop right here because that's where the bears are usually sleeping. Uh, even though they have that that little bedding area over there, they always sleep in this one. So I thought that was pretty cool. It kind of reminded me of, of what you'd see in a real zoo. <laughs> I like the way they kind of have to sit up for a little bit, make sure they're completely awake before getting up and moving around and then here's some more little uh, information stuff uh, I made this one here myself grab some actual information about bears and kind of put it all on there um, don't ask me what it says because I don't remember and my vision is not that good to read it <laughs> so um, but yeah I thought that was pretty neat I mean this uh, kind of has a a full 180 view see all the way across um, you can see the the bears entrance to the the backstage area and the door for the the keeper and then we got our waterfall and stream going right through the middle of everything so yeah let's head back out this way speed it up a little bit 
stay on the path that just goes back up top walk through everyone and then this here is our our little rest area where everyone's kind of converging which I I assumed they would do which is not bad because you can still you can see everything up top so yeah a couple of different uh, levels of viewing and if we go all the way back up here Um, eventually, uh, once this entrance plaza is all done, I want to have pathing come all the way out to the end here. So you can actually, uh, where is it? There we go. Look out over everything from right here. So, yeah, that's the, the bear habitat. Let's, I should have, uh, went backstage first before I came back up here. Um, some of these, um, I'm gonna have to work on some stuff for the, uh, these uh, paths going to the, the backstage areas. Maybe like fence them off out of view from the, the guests or, or something like that. So, here um, I put in the double doors here and just kind of put up a little uh, a little sign uh, just saying that the animals could be present so once you go through here it's kind of a the gates closed now but it could be open at any point um, and I kind of see this as a, a staging area maybe if they get uh, new animals in they can come in here um, kind of hose them down get the uh, get the bugs and stuff off of them I don't know uh, but then they come through this gate and then we have our our different holding cages over on this side and see I made a little switch system there uh, I saw a couple of different people kind of use this um, this setup here so um, I thought I would jump on that trend as well. But the, I mean, it looks pretty cool, so why not use it? And then this is the indoor area for these guys. Nothing too special, just a just a little platform for them to climb up on. Some water. Uh, the keepers will throw food down in that corner there at the end as well. And then you got your skylight for most of the lighting there. And then we'll come through out into the habitat and walk around through the keeper door and there's a close-up look there come through here I did a little trim work on the doorways and then we got our little our little table there keeper left his mug and his hat and yeah, and we have our keeper hut. Come around for a staff room and just a water filtration system. I want to start building uh, actual larger uh, facilities for like the filtration and stuff like that. Um, I can't remember who I watched that built a uh, a large. I believe Sparrow did something, but there was somebody else as well. And yeah, I just want to kind of make things uh, more realistic rather than just plopping down the necessities and stuff. So and I have a little sign in here, um, just tells you where to go, which there isn't really <laughs> anywhere else to go, but it was a big blank wall. So I wanted to put something up there. And I just realized that that's really, that window's really high up there. Um, yeah. I just put a little window there just to kind of, um, you know, so you could look in to, to see if everything's okay on this side. Um, but yeah, that is about it. Let me pull this. Whoops, wrong button there. Back up here. There we go. Um, 
and yeah you see I have some some wind turbines I want to try to keep um, keep the uh, the power kind of use less of the transformers and use more economical sources so um, I will be trying to, to kind of hide those a little bit better in the future those are just kind of thrown in there just so I could get everything working um, I'm not sure you know what what's going to be put around the back side of that so once I get around to to all of that then those guys will be kind of blocked off and covered up more but of course it had to start snowing now but that is our um, bear habitat um, the first one of this series so I hope you guys enjoyed it if you do uh, or if you did uh, drop me a comment um, hit that like and subscribe if you haven't yet and like I said if you want your name to be sponsored um, for this habitat or any of them in the future just uh, just let me know in the comments and I'll write it down and put your name as kind of like a foundation that you know helped uh, build the habitats for this zoo so um, I appreciate everyone and I will see you on the next one thanks bye